Hi neighbors, welcome back to another video of Cooking with Neighbors. My name is Jerry Ellen and welcome to my channel. Welcome if you're new and welcome if you're returning. I appreciate the time that you're giving me today and any time that you give me is greatly appreciated. I don't ever want to go through a video without letting you know how much I appreciate you. I'm just going to take about another 30 seconds of your time before we get into the video. On this channel, you're going to find many different cuisines. In the YouTube world and out on the streets of YouTube, they say, find your niche. Jerry has not found her niche. I like too many different things and so does my family, so you'll find many different things on this channel. There's baking, there's casseroles, there's crock pots. However, I do enjoy vintage cooking and I do enjoy taking Canadian cuisine to my viewers because I am from Canada and I'm proud of that. And in the coming weeks, I'm going to be doing some things from the east coast of Canada, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, PEI, Newfoundland, because that's the part of Canada I'm from. But I enjoy lots of Canadian cuisine from the, the east coast to the west coast to the tip of the, the territories back down. So anyway, tune in, click the notification bell after you subscribe if, so that you get notified of all these different things I'm going to bring. But today, let's get into it. Let's do our vintage 1957 Mennonite Community Cookbook recipe, and it's delicious, believe me. So neighbors, this is the cookbook. It's the 65th anniversary edition with over 1,100 recipes. Well, no doubt I'll be coming back to many of them to share with you. And I hope that you enjoy. Let's get into this. For the last 10 minutes, I'm talking away, and the video wasn't on. I had a pound of lean, I have, I'm just going to go through the recipe anyway with you. Let's go with the flow. One pound of lean ground beef. I did have a drizzle of oil in my pan, if the recipe doesn't call for that. But to stick to the recipes, uh, that's the only thing I veered, veered away from. Because my meat is very lean. And then uh, it says to add a teaspoon of salt and an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper, which I added. Then I let it. I was letting the meat brown a little bit, and I added a half a cup of finely chopped uh, onion and a half a cup of chopped up green bell pepper or a capsicum, depending on where you're from and what you call it. Okay, I'm letting this here cook away. Oh, this today is a Mennonite. Family, Mennonite Family Community Cookbook, and they're fairly, I know you guys enjoy the Mennonite and Amish recipes, as do I and our, my family, because uh, I actually find it very interesting because the area that I'm in has a, a large uh, Mennonite community, and it's quite interesting to make some dishes from their cookbooks, at least I find so anyway. So this one is from 1957. I've been saying all this for I don't know how long. <laughs> I was talking away, telling you about Harriet at my side in the, in the bed there. Bless her. Look at her. There's my little baby. She's my best friend in the whole world, and I love her so much. The, so there's going to be a couple options I'm going to give you. I'm going to stick to the recipe from the Mennonite cookbook. But i also seen this on websites... Mennonite websites this recipe uh, differently as well. So I'm going to give you an option because there's going to be like the cream sauce that you make. It's a beef and biscuit or a beef gel, a uh, beef pinwheel. Uh, it's called different things from, I guess, maybe different Amish and Mennonite communities, but it's basically the same recipe. My oven is preheating to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so around 200 degrees Celsius. It smells good. There's not a lot of seasonings, salt and pepper, but you go ahead and you do you for your family. If you this, I'm sticking to the recipe like I say for you all, so you see the recipe as it's written. And uh, but you guys can, you know, I mean, share and put garlic in it and garlic or garlic powder, onion powder. You do you. Now you're going to get the moisture starting to come out of the meat. And then you're going to start hearing it sizzle after the moisture is gone. And then I'll go on to the next step. So you kind of listen to your to your meat. Sometimes people think that this lean ground beef, right? So sometimes people think, oh, there's a lot of oil in that. And they start straining it. But you got to let the water evaporate first from the meat. And then you'll start to hear it sizzle. And when it's sizzling, it builds up some flavor onto your beef. And then after that, you can strain off 
or get a paper towel and wipe out some of the oils and grease from your meat. Oopsie, almost knocked his all over. And then when this portion is done, the biscuit making part, I'll, I'll change you over to a different spot in the kitchen. Don't, oh my gosh, scary. Uh, two tablespoons of lard, or you can leave some of the grease in your pan and not do the lard, right? Or you can use baking drippings or any other kind of uh, oil, grease that you want to use, cooking oil, whatever. Mix that. Mix that in about. How are y'all doing? How's your weekend? I hope that if you had, I know that some of you were telling me, my good friends here, telling me that they have COVID, a few of you actually. So I hope that you all recovered from that, or on at least on the way of recovering fully from it. Two tablespoons of flour. I love you, so I don't want to eat, I don't want you to smell you now. So I want you to have good health all year and happiness. Okay, that's got the rawness cooked out of that. One cup of milk. You can use water if you don't have milk, okay? Or if you can't use milk. And some of the other options, or another option that I've seen was using a can of cream of celery or cream of mushroom, I seen cream of mushroom soup out there added to this with a uh, bit of water. But anyway, that's going to cook. Simmer that for until it thickens a bit, okay? Meanwhile, I'm going to take you over. We're going to let that simmer for a few minutes and I'm going to take you over to another spot of the kitchen. Okay, neighbors. Two cups all-purpose flour. Four teaspoons of uh, baking powder. One teaspoon of salt. I, there's another midnight cookbook. There's something I definitely want, want to share. It looks really good. Let me just check to see if there's a name by this recipe because it was a community cookbook. Let's see what the person's name was. Mrs. Isaac Good, comma, East Earl. So I guess it's the East Earl area. I'm going to look that up on the map. So I mixed that up. I'm going to put uh, three tablespoons of the short thing. I'm going to wash my hands again. Roll dish out. Yeah. So just breaking up the shortening into there, crumbling it in there. Gonna add three fourths uh, milk. Three fourths milk. Give that an old mixy mix. doesn't say how it says to roll it out to a, like a quarter of an inch thick but it doesn't say length or anything or and it says that it serves six to eight uh, so I'm guessing you get six six to eight pinwheels out of it anyway I'll, I'll see how it goes <laughs> I never made it before I have a little bit of flour here. 
because you got to roll it up like a, a jelly roll to make the pinwheels. Greased my baking dish. This is my mixture that has cooled slightly. I'm gonna get whatever servings I get out of it, I guess. Do you think this is gonna to stay together? Barbecue sauce in this might be nice too. See how they turn out. <laughs> hey neighbors. So it's just about done. I got like a half a minute left there, if that. They've been in there for uh, like 20 minutes, 22 minutes. It says 20 minutes in the recipe, but just keep an eye on it around the 18 minute mark maybe or something. See if they're getting nice and brown for you. And then you can uh, gauge them when to take them out. But they're, look they're, they're looking really tasty. I must omit. Should, I, got, I got to throw together a salad, I think, to have with this. Lettuce and tomato or whatever on the side would be nice with these. Uh, or, you know, what have you. So I'm going to do that and get one out of the pan and show you. But look. Oh my. They look good, right? Awesome. Looking good. It does look good, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm, su I I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Like, what a, it, you can actually do like, uh, I, I got some ideas. I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to try them before I say what would be good actually. Cause there's, a, I got lots of ideas running through my head. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? Anyway, I'm going to give this one to hubby. Here you go, hubby. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, now we're going to go enjoy our dinner. Uh, Graham is in there. He says it's delicious. He's uh, got the sports on, and he's feeding puppy and feeding cats and feeding himself. So anyway, peace, love, God bless. This is a must try. I got an idea that I'm going to go with based off of this, and I'm going to come with that within, I would say, within a week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it. I'm going to share it, and I'm excited, too. This is good. Uh, next one is going to be, well, is this great or good, Graham? Huh? Is it great or good? Oh, it's great. Graham says it's great. Okay, and I got some ideas, and I'll see you again in the next one. Peace, love, God bless. Take care, everyone. Bye.